Breaking news just over an hour away from CNN's special town hall on guns just one week after the school massacre in Parkland, Florida. The town hall comes just hours after President Trump held a listening session at the White House with parents and students trying to prevent another tragedy. And there was this photo showing President Trump's note card for the session. The piece of White House stationery has five points. We can see three of them. The first two are, what would you most want me to know about your experience? What can we do to help you feel safe? And finally, I hear you. Out front now, CNN senior political analyst Mark Preston, CNN chief political analyst Gloria Borger, and former advisor to four presidents, David Gergen. Gloria, first to you. You know, we're looking at that note card. I think the I hear you at the end is getting a lot of focus as if the president mm -hmm. had to be reminded to empathize. But the first two questions are spot on, or I think what the people in that room wanted asked and the people at this town hall want asked tonight as well. Yeah, I, I think so. And, you know, in that regard, I think the president went out of his way to just be a listener. He did sort of talk about uh, the question of whether concealed carry might be something uh, people ought to think about for teachers. But generally, I think the president, you know, was in a listening mode. I think it's a little odd to have to remind yourself to be empathetic. It's not one of the president's mm -hmm. great skills, as we know. But I, you know, I do think that the people in that room walked away mm -hmm. today uh, thinking that they had been heard and there were differing points of views and there was no vitriol, which we're so used to in this kind of a debate, uh, inside that room at least, and that the president uh, was hearing them out. David Gergen, you know, we've seen presidents uh, act before in these times, you know, President Obama, the comforter in chief, those things. How did President Trump do today? There were divergent views in that room. Sure. <clears throat> I think we should cut him some slack, John, on the note cards. Mm -hmm. You know, presidents who go into meetings like this, especially if they know they're going to be emotional, and they can, and they may sort of get, they, mm -hmm. they may be sort of very royal themselves. They need those, and they frequently bring those kind of things in. Uh, and, and I think in this case, he deserves credit mm -hmm. for bringing people in and listening. But the real test is still ahead. It is what he does, mm -hmm. is what action he takes. And so far, what we're hearing from the White House are mostly half measures. They, even this controversial measure you brought up earlier in the program about lifting the age wow. to, to 21 before you can buy an assault weapon. If you look back to, at the 14 deadliest mass shootings, 11 of them were committed by people over 21. The problem is not the age particularly. That's a piece of it. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to get action, what about those other, what about those 11 who got their hands on big guns and shot down a lot of people? You, you say cut the president some slack over the note card. Yeah. One thing this event was, this, this event was not about President Trump. So many of the events that President Trump attends are, seem to revolve right. around him. This one wasn't about him. I agree. You know, he didn't put himself at the center of it. He was seated there and he listened, but he didn't make it just about him. Mark Preston, David Gergen just brought up this fascinating issue of whether or not that the age limit to purchase an AR-15, a rifle, should be raised from 18 where it is now to 21. This isn't a giant step, but tonight, and I think it's in advance of our CNN town hall that they're doing this, the NRA comes out with a statement that they are opposed to this. They're opposed to raising the age limit to buy an AR-15 to 21. Where does this debate go now? Will the president take a stand on this? Well, there's going to be very uh, several fronts about this debate right now. Of course, you have uh, liberals and Democrats that are, are clearly on one side. You have the NRA on another side. You have uh, a part of the Republican Party that's in the middle that want to see some sensible gun solutions uh, that perhaps the NRA doesn't care about. But you also have a lot of Republicans and, quite frankly, some Democrats who are from states in the Midwest and down in the South who agree with the NRA. Now the president himself, uh, we never know which way he's going when it comes to specific policy issues. What he said today, though, I think caught the National Rifle Association off guard. Mm -hmm. I think it caught conservatives off guard, but I don't think they're too surprised by it. This has happened in the past mm -hmm. uh, on other pieces of legislation and, you know, the year plus that he has been in office. But I do have to say this, John. Tonight is going to be an amazing moment. There'll be more than 7,000 people in this arena behind me. Think about that. A town hall with 7,000 people. There's going to be high emotions. But we are going to hear from the NRA. They did accept our invitation, and that does say something for them to come here, as well as Senator Marco Rubio, who has come under a lot of criticism uh, for his support of gun measures that many, if not most people in this hall, do not favor. We're going to talk about Marco Rubio in just a second, because I think he's a fascinating case study uh, mm -hmm. in this discussion. But so, too, is this discussion on age limits, Gloria, because 
as David Gergen was saying here, th this isn't a giant thing necessarily. No. This feels like a very narrow thing that a lot. Jeff Flake, a Republican from Arizona, is proposing going to co-sponsor a measure with Dianne Feinstein, Democrat, on this. You know, there are Republicans who are for it. it. It seems like an area where there could be agreement, but even on this, the NRA is saying no. Sure. And what you're doing, though, is you're nibbling around the edges. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and maybe you're going to change background checks. Who knows if you can even get that done? That couldn't get done after after Newtown, for heaven's sakes. So you're nibbling here and you're nibbling there. I think the real challenge for this president, who says that he's not bought by anybody, uh, including the NRA, which has contributed millions and millions of dollars uh, to, to, uh, to elect him, um, I think this is a this is a moment for him where he will say, I'm going to do this mm -hmm. and um, I don't care if the NRA supports me or not. And the question is whether he can bring along conservative Republicans who are afraid of being primaried mm -hmm. in their home districts by more conservative uh, Republicans mm -hmm. who are pro Second Amendment and say, I'm going to do whatever the NRA says, no matter what. It seems he can do this. The, the president could get this much done if he wanted to. Absolutely. This is a test of presidential courage. It's one of those moments you can you line it up and say, he acted presidential today. Is he going to have the guts? Is he going to stand up to the special interest group? Great presidents have done that in moments like this. They have recognized the needs of the country and they have acted appropriately. You cannot listen to those kids and not think he ought to do something bold and courageous. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested to see what the NRA says about this tonight at the town hall. And Mark Preston, you brought up Marco Rubio who has had, you know, a complicated relationship with guns going back a far away. I mean, after the Orlando nightclub shooting, he got back in to the Senate race because he felt like those issues were important right now. Do you think he'll move on any of this? I think everybody's going to have to move at some point. It's, it's really about varying degrees. How far will people move? And I think we'll hear something from Marco Rubio tonight. Will it go as far? as perhaps most people in this building want him to go. I don't think that's going to happen. But I do think, given what we saw what, a week ago, we've never seen this. We've never seen this kind of political action, mm -hmm. certainly not in recent times when it comes to this issue. And it really is red hot right now. David Gurgen, Gloria Borger, Mark Preston, thank you for help setting up this town hall. I know you were a key player in it, and thanks so much for being with us tonight. Out front next, we're live at CNN's town hall with a local mayor who asked this tough question. When did we decide that we love our guns more than we love our children? And the voices of grief, they just aren't going away. They're getting louder.